morning. Um, happy Sabbath. And we're going to begin with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, we are so very thankful for the Sabbath hours, uh, for the precious time that we have together. As we open your word, as we look at prophecy, as we address the chronology of 2030, I pray, Lord, that you can give us clear minds and an understanding heart and that you can help us to discern truth from error, that you can correct anything um, that we think that is incorrect and that you can give us clear, bright light. We know, Lord, there's much that we need to understand um, to prepare us for the time ahead. We just pray, Lord, that uh, the study this afternoon will contribute to that and that we can clearly see uh, the message for the present. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> well, good afternoon again. And so last night and two weeks before, I did a basic introduction to uh, the Great Reset 2030. And um, in putting this study together, uh, there's still lots of things that um, I don't I don't have prepared. I mean, I've been reading a lot, watching videos. People have been sending me material, and and what I tried to put together last night was this idea that we have these three different um, parts of Babylon: the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet, and they all have prophecies attached specifically to them. That is, they all have a mission, a goal, a plan in, in their idea of what it means to conquer the world. Now, we know that the papacy in the end will be sitting upon the throne of the earth as there's this threefold union. And I have introduced the idea of this symbolic date, at least, of 2030 and what that means. And... As I've said before, I'm not time setting. I'm not placing some event there. Uh, the date may be completely symbolic and just given to us to help to understand um, the time that we're living in. But what I want to do this afternoon is I want to look a little bit more at the chronology. Now, when we look at Ezra chapter 7, so we're going to just jump here uh, to the book of Ezra. What are the dates that are given in Ezra chapter 7 uh, through to chapter 10, to the end of chapter 10? Does anybody know offhand what dates Ezra gives us? What biblical dates? Well, the first one is the first day of the first month. Okay, so we have the first day of the first month, and that is we know that in Ezra 7, 9, for upon the first day of the first month began he to go up from Babylon. And, and we also know it's on the, first day of the fifth month that he came to Jerusalem. So we have two dates there. Okay, so, so we got the first day of the first month and the first day of the, the fifth month. What else? Yes, in the following chapter, we have the story of him uh, going to leaving Babylon, and right. so he's, he tarries there until, is it the 12th day of the first month? Right, so they're going to they're gonna go to the river Ahava, which is at the border of Babylon. So he's going to leave Babylon, wherever he is in Babylon, and he's going to do a, a journey about nine days. And they're, they have a, a muster point there, I would assume, that they're, that they're going to meet. These different people are all going to meet at, which is by the river Ahava. And they're going to have they're going to wait there for three days. They have this fast, and um, there's a bunch of things happen. They have to send people back to get some Levites because they didn't have any Levites. They did have priests, and and it says in 8:31, then we departed from the river Ahava on the 12th day of the first month. So we have this other date, the 12th day of the first month. Now they're going to arrive at Jerusalem. Um, we came, and when they get to Jerusalem, there's also going to be this period of three days. And then on the fourth day, they're going to bring this silver and gold that they had brought 
and that they had given to the 12, 12 priests, they're going to bring it into the temple. So we have three days marked. And then we're going to have um, in chapter 10, what are the dates going to be in chapter 10? Yeah, it is uh, the 20th day of the ninth. Sorry, is it the 20th day of the ninth month? 20th day of the ninth month, yeah. So that's Ezra 10, verse 9. Then all the men of Benjamin gathered themselves together unto Jerusalem within three days, and it was the ninth month on the 20th day of the month, and all the people sat in the street of the house of God, trembling because of this matter and for the great rain. So it's interesting that with uh, the 12th day of the first month, the first day of the fifth month, and the 20th day of the ninth month, we have these periods of three days that are mentioned. Um, and, and we've looked at this before. There's these chiasms between these periods of three days. Uh, so, and, and, it, and, and it's quite interesting, um, uh, you know, how that works, how that connects to the 70 weeks and the 2300 days. But we're, we're not going to look at that at this point. We want to look at something else. Um, now, there is going to be this uh, divorce proceedings that are going to occur. And it's going to be, where is it here? I guess it's, you're going to mention some other dates. So I don't know where it is, but I'll find it. Okay, it's in verse 16. And the children of the capti captivity did so, and Ezra the priest with certain chiefs of the fathers after the house of their fathers, and all of them by their names were separated and sat down in the first day of the 10th month to examine the matter. And they made an end with all the men that had taken strange wives by the first day of the first month. So what are the two things we notice here? I mean, we, we have these dates, but what, what's the significance here? Okay, first, what are the two dates? It's a period of three months, isn't it? From okay, the first so, day. Yeah, the so can, right. So from the first day of the 10th month. So they, they, they do this confession on the 20th day of the ninth month, and then there's a period of 10 days to the first day of the 10th month. And then they're going to start this divorce proceedings, but they're going to end on the first day of the first month. So the story in Ezra begins on the first day of the first month, and it ends on the first day of the first month. So we'll look at this. So we look at these dates. We got the first day of the first month, three days. Then we have the 12th day of the first month. And then we have the first day of the fifth month. And then we have three days. And then we're going to have three days again and the 20th day, uh, day of the ninth month. And then you're going to have 10 days. And then you're going to have the first day of the 10th month. And then you're going to have three months. And then you're going to have the first day of the first month. So there you're going to see that we start on the first day of the first month. I don't know, maybe that's a little tiny to see. And we end on the first day of the first month. So what is this then? A year? It's a year, right? And so it represents something. It is, we can't say it's arbitrary that it started on the first day of the first month and ended on the first day of the first month, can we? That doesn't look arbitrary at all. <laughs> yeah. And we know also that if we take these dates, now we have the first day of the first month is double, so we're not going to do it twice. We're just going to add 11 plus 121 plus 15 plus 29. So we're going to get rid of the zero there. 
and same with this one plus 11. So we're just taking the first day of the 10th month and we're just making it 11. And we add these together, we get 187. And 187, of course, is the number of days from the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the seventh month. And the 10th day of the seventh month happens to be exactly in the center of these two dates. I'll make this neat. Twentieth day of the ninth month, but it's also interesting if I take these dates: first day of the first month, first day of the fifth month, twentieth day of the ninth month, plus uh, the first day of the tenth month. So that's going to be one hundred one. If I add these together, what do I get? Anybody add them for us? Taking a moment. Is it uh, 457? Okay. So we get 457 BC. And this is the Jewish year 457 BC, right? From, uh, from how we would count it, correct? Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely interesting. Um, so we know that this isn't arbitrary. It couldn't just have, have happened. And we know in Millerite history, when we take the main way marks in Millerite history, the first day of the first month, right? First day of the first month plus the first day of the fifth, uh, plus the fifth day of the fourth month, I should put it in that order, plus the first day of the fifth month plus the tenth day of the seventh month, that gives us 187 as well, right? And that's the number of days from the first day of the first month to the first day or the 10th day of the seventh month. So, so this even ties in 457 with 1844. Now, what I'm concerned about here, what, what I'm noticing though, that there is this first day of the first month. And, and what, what I've done, this isn't working too well. I don't like this clock, but. Uh, So in Millerite history, uh, we have this uh, period of time. Oops, I'm going to get a different pin here. We're going to have this first day of the first month. So one of the things we can say is that this first day of the first month in 1844, that it's how many days from the first day of the first month in 457 BC, or how many years, pardon me. So if you're gonna go from, we'll just, we'll put 457 BC down here. So how many years Now, it used to be that, you know, we thought that Miller, Miller was counting from the first day of the first month in 457 to arrive at um, the first day of the first month in 33 AD. But we know that he counted from the 12th day of the first month, but can we count 2,300 years from 457 BC to 1844? I would say yes. Okay. Now, I went through this process in the first presentation that we were studying the chapters, or we were studying uh, Genesis, and we had looked at the covenants in chapter 12, in chapter 15, in chapter 17, and in chapter 22. And we multiplied these together to get this number. Six seven three two zero, and this number happens to be 
187, if you divide it by 360, 187 prophetic years. Now, for us, that was just an interesting symbol. But it deals with the covenant. And can we relate this symbol, 187, to the covenant? What was the title of Samuel Snow's fourth letter, letter that was um, published on July 18th? Does anyone know? Confirming the covenant. Confirming the covenant. Was, was that just a coincidence? No. no. That it was published three days before midnight. Was that a coincidence? No. No. Right? Did Samuel Snow have control over when his letter was going to be published? No. No. I mean, he had written that in June 29th. It wasn't published till July 18th. Especially back in those days. Yeah, well, well, one is it was published in the Midnight Cry, which was published on Thursdays, right? Signs of the Times on Wednesdays. So, you know, it, 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 he really couldn't control when it was going to be published. But, but it, it gets published on this date of July 18th. And, and would he have understood the significance of it? Well, obviously not. He wouldn't know that July 18th is a symbol of 187. He wouldn't have thought that way. And he wouldn't have thought that there's 187 days from the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the seventh month. When he presented at Boston on the fifth day of the fourth month, I don't think he knew it was the fifth day of the fourth month. He was invited by invitation. So July 21st, he's there at Boston saying that it's midnight because he can recognize it's three months that they've been in the tearing time and that a year is, is a day in Bible prophecy is a year and the night would be six months and midnight would be three months. So he says, this is midnight and I'm giving the midnight cry. But, but he doesn't know that it's exactly the day between the first day of the first month and the 10th day of the seventh month. So there's just things that, that happened that we can now look back and objectively measure and say that there's no way that anybody could have planned these things. And there's just too many things that fit together in these types of puzzles. So if we take the first day of the first month in 1844, and, well, let's, let's do this first. So when I saw this number, I knew that I had seen this number before. Well, something close to it. I had seen another number, which is this number, 67920. So I knew that 67,920 days is exactly 2,300 months. And so I thought about this because I thought, well, if I counted from the first day of the first month in 1844, so I'm going to go from April 19th, and I'm going to count 67,920 days, I'm going to come to some date. And that date that I came to was April 5th, 2030. Now, the thing is, I'd already seen April 5th, 2030 before. That is, this happens to be the first day of the first month. And as I explained a couple of weeks ago, that when we had done the week of Christ study back in 2018, I'd noticed that I could take the, the day for a year, so days going this way, and years going this way, and I could work my way back, and that when I got to the year 2030, it would be the first day of the first month, and that the first day of the first month in 2030 was April 5th. So I'd already come to that, but I hadn't seen that it was 2,300 months from April 19th. But it was when we did the study on the covenants that God gave us this confirmation this 187 prophetic years. But the, the interesting thing is, is this is 186 solar years. 
but it's also 187 prophetic years, we call them PY, and 20 prophetic months. That is 600 days, that's the difference between these two, is 20 prophetic months. So I have not just the symbol that we have for July 18th, but we have the symbol for July 18, 2020, plus we have the number of cardinal days that go from the first day of the first month on April 19th to the first day of the first month in 2030. And 120 solar years, that's that's a, a cardinal count. We, we could use it as an ordinal, ordinal count. If we wanted to, we could say this is the first, first day of the first month and we'd get to the 187th first day of the first month. And that's kind of how we count from the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the seventh month. It's 186 cardinal days, but 187 ordinal days. Now, this in and of itself is extremely profound. The problem that we would have here is we have this date way in the future, April 5th, 2030. So back in 2018, when I saw that the first day of the first month was this 2030, I sort of dismissed it. I mean, I, I wrote down, I think, you know, the second coming or something like that, just as, as a thought experiment, you know, what, what would that mean? But I didn't believe that I can predict the second coming, and I, definitely I don't think that's what it is. But you can see we have something from the first day of the first month to the first day of the first month in our history, just as in Millerite history, they have the first day of the first month in that year 457 BC. And that it has the symbols, this history contains the symbols of 187. And this history contains the symbols of 187. Okay, so let's just think about this for a bit. <clears throat> okay, what could this possibly mean? Let, let's look at it a little more critically. <clears throat> Are we being told? So, so what do we see here? What is it we're, we're looking at? Are we being told to pay attention to 187? Dwight, you have some thoughts? Oh, hang on a second. I'm not hearing anybody. So I have to. That's what's wrong. Okay, somebody speak. See if I can hear them now. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I, I hit the wrong button. I disconnected my speakers. Are we being told to pay attention to 187? Okay, yes. So, I mean, one of the things we see, even with these symbols of three days, is it's drawing our attention to something. And God has gotten our attention. He, he's been seeking our attention about something. I mean, when, this, when we saw this, I mean, we see it at the right time, in, in my view. Okay. Could that, could, that, could that mean something external? Something what? Something external outside the movement. Okay. So, so the question is, is, is it some, something external? Now, my view is that uh, external events can witness to internal events. Yeah. At any external event that happens is not something that we actually predict. It's right. right. Happen in a way that, I mean, we, we, we set up dates. And, you know, God shows us we're measuring time. We, we start to see these things unfold. Um, but we're not really, we don't believe that we can time set with external events. That is, we can't know um, not just events connected with the second coming, but just any kind of external event. Every time we've tried to predict one, it's only witness to an internal event. And, and then external events that have happened also, which we didn't necessarily predict. I mean, we predicted Nashville, but Nashville gets bombed on December 25th. 
And of course, it's not a nuclear bomb as we predicted, but it just happens to be, you know, 187 days after we published this in the Tennessean. So, so we end up with all of these things happening and we can witness to them, we can measure them. Okay, so, so that's, that's a good comment there. So we have to consider, I mean, we can consider that. We can consider that maybe this is the first time that we have an external event and somebody could even argue, well, maybe that's when Nashville is supposed to be hit, you know, or something like that. Um, but what about the fact that there's these, this first day of the first month to the first day of the first month in 457? Am, am I correct in lining these two up? Because I see the symbols there. That I can line up the first day of the first month in 1844 with the first day of the first month in 2030. Does that seem reasonable? That these are parallel histories? Seems reasonable at this point. Okay. Things can change. Now, okay. <clears throat> now, uh, to try to understand this a little bit more, we, we have in in Ezra's history, history and, and I haven't really um, I haven't really examined this as much as I would like to, or as much of maybe as I should have. But we're going to have this tenth day of the first, or the first day of the tenth month. Um, does that represent anything in our history? The first day of the tenth month. Would you repeat your question, please? Okay, so we have this period of three months from the first day of the 10th month to the first day of the first month. Now, remember, we've already marked the 20th day of the ninth month in our history as what, what event? What's the 20th day of the ninth month in our history? But in a way of strange wives slash doctrines. Okay, so that's December 25th, 2021. And, and then we have 10 days. So 10 days are symbolic of what? A testing period. The okay. only thing I can think of with the 110 is the age, age of jo Joseph and Joshua when, when they died, which we had read recently. Okay, uh, so... Yeah, well, also, we could take the, the, the tenth day, the first day of the tenth month and see that it, it, it somewhat relates to the tenth day of the first month as a symbol. That's possible as well. But in, in our history, we've passed the tenth, the twentieth day of the ninth month. And so we must be in the history leading up to the first day of the 10th month. Does, does that seem reasonable? It's the crossing of the Jordan on the 10th day of the first month. Okay, yeah. And so Joshua 4.19. Yeah, Joshua 4.19, which is a symbol of the first day of the first month, because <laughs> April, April 19th. So we know that these symbols are tied together. The, that we don't just take these symbols and say, because we know every waymark is typical of every other waymark. That was something Parminder tried to steal from us, that waymarks typify each other. And, and by typify, we mean they just repeat the same history. So, so we can take these different symbols and we can see that they apply. But the first day of the 10th month, I, I don't know that there's any other place where the first day of the 10th month month is mentioned in the Bible. <clears throat> so what about the period of three months? So we have the 10 days. Um, and, and then we have three months. So three months is going to be, well, we normally think it's 90 days, and, and maybe we could count that inclusively um, from the first day of the 10th month to the first day of the first month. It's going to be a period of three months if you count 
that count that it would be 90 days. And then you have the 10 days from the 20th day of the ninth month to the first day of the first month. So you got a period of 100 days. So how, how could we look at this as a period of time? Do, would we look at it as time in our movement in some way? This period in which they divorce from the strange wives? Would we argue that April 5th, 2030 is when that work of divorcement is complete? Is, is that a period of time, a process that goes on? I mean, I don't know, and I'm just, asking the questions is it a period or is it a symbol right so so that's the question we we, we would say is it a period or is it a symbol and, and see that's part of the the problem here that we have because we know that we have put dates into the future we definitely didn't predict anything but we can recognize that those dates were were not um insignificant especially as they related to the movement, but also to some external events. And, and so we can see that a chronology unfolds, but that chronology, even though it, it exists as a chronology, it's symbolizing things. That they're, they're, they're just not dates, they're symbols. And so- yeah, they, have, they have to be symbols. I mean, just yeah. the yeah. way they come up like this, I mean, there's no doubt. <laughs> Yeah, so, so they're symbols, and, and people worry about us putting a date in the future that we're predicting something, or we're time setting, and, and I don't think that's what we're doing, but we could look at these three months, these 90 days, um, what symbol would that be? Now, there's some comments in the chat, I, I don't know if any of them relate to this. Uh, okay. Some stuff about FDR. Okay. <clears throat> now, when when we're looking at this period of twenty three hundred months, it's it's representing twenty three hundred years, right? So that is twenty three hundred years, which is actually twenty three hundred days. 2300 evenings and mornings, it comes to represent this 2300 months. But 2300 months ends up being 186 solar years or 187 uh, years and 20 months in prophetic time. So what, what way could we understand these, these 90 days or these three months? Anybody with ideas on this? I know I'm asking you to think about something that I've thought about. I don't necessarily have an answer. Do these 90 days represent a trimester? Um, okay. So, so that means it's one uh, quarter of a year was what it would be, but but in this in this situation, mm -hmm. we know that the a biblical year could be thirty days, it could be twenty nine days, or a biblical month. Sorry, yeah. So we either have three consecutive thirty day periods or we have 230 and 129, or we have 229s and 130, in a literal sense. Right, so, I mean, if I look at it, at least on our calendar converter, and I go back uh, to 457 BC, so I'm, I'm gonna bring this up so people can see this. <clears throat> so if we go to 457 BC, and we're gonna go to, um, I guess I'm way back here. So I'm going to go to the 10th month. 
So there's the, the first day of the 10th month on the biblical calendar. You see it's actually in 458. It's January 9th on the Julian, right? And then if I counted 90 days from there, you're going to see that I actually come to the second day of the first month. But of course, that is a cardinal count. So as an inclusive count or an ordinal count, it would be 90 days. So hopefully that makes sense to people. But I can go back, and if I go back 30 days, you'll see that, that it's 30 days. The month of ADAR is 30 days. And then I minus 29, and that gets, so the, the month that is 29 is that 11th month. And then I go minus 30 again, and that'll bring me to the first day of the 10th month. So you can see that the months are going to go 30, 29, 30, ending off the year, according to this calendar converter. So we're talking 89 days. Cardinal count, but Cardinal 90, count. 90 days inclusive. Right. So however we want to look at it. Um, but we have both options open. And then if we go back here. Um, it's the number from from uh, when I went from the first day of the first month back 10 days, it brought me to the 20th day, right? Or 21st day, pardon me. So the 21st day, if I add 10 days, you'll see that Kislev had, had 30 days, not 29. And which is whether that actually happened this year or not that year specifically, I don't know. But what we can say is that we would be counting 10 days in between. So technically, if we were doing, going to do a cardinal count, it would be 100, it would be 11 days. But we're going to take it as 10 and 90. So it's still 100 days, right? If we go from the first day of the 10th month to the first day of the first month, it's 100 days in a cardinal count. And the first ones are 10 days, which is a cardinal count followed by 90 days as an ordinal count okay but in the comment from the chat we're being pointed to genesis 1717 17, where abram was 90 and 9 yeah and sarai was or sarah was 90 when it was said that they would have a child yeah so we would have the reason to look at this in the 90 and the 99 because that would line up with what we were just addressing from genesis yeah except that we don't get 90 and 9 we get 90 and 11. okay or 89 and 11 i guess is what we would get or a 90 and 10. we we could look at it both of them as ordinal counts and we would have 11 and 90, which would be symbol of 911. But I don't, I don't think that that's what's being, what's being pointed to us here. I, because I really do think the 10 days is the test. So okay. 20th day of the ninth month to the, between the 20th day of the ninth month and the first day of the first month is a period of 10 days. And, and they've come to be, to a call to repentance on the 20th day of the ninth month. And so we would have to say for our movement, that we have this symbol. So, yeah, so I'm not sure what the 110 stories are. If you're just taking the first day of the 10th, 10th month, is that's where you're getting the 110 from, I guess. Angela is in the chat. Yes, I am. Uh, my mom. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just don't see the 90 and 9 anywhere here because we don't we don't have 99 days in any kind of count. With the, um, the period of three months, which is 90 days, and then you have 100 days, which is three months, 10 days. Okay. Either, and fitting into them, you can connect uh, Jehoiachin and his reign. Okay. Okay. So how would that help us with Jehoiachin's reign? What is that telling us about our history? Well, we've connected him to the, the second angel's message. Okay. So, so it has to do with the second angel's message. Okay. 
Now we could also count it three months and 11 days if we just did um, a cardinal count from the 20th day of the ninth month to the first day of the first month, that's 11 days and then three months. And, and three months and 11 days or the 11th day of the third month is a symbol of Pentecost. So, so we can we can put a number of different symbols here, and I'm not saying that you know there's some that are right and some that are wrong. Um, I mean there might be some that are wrong, and there are obviously some that are right. But I would think that the most apt would be the ten days, as far as as this being a testing time. But the question is, what is this first day of the first month and these three months? Um, so, so what we would have to say is that there's going to be this three months um, that are still going to continue for some for some reason, uh, whether it's just symbolically three months or literally three months that we're going to have this symbol apply or how that symbol is going to be applied. I don't know. Any any other thoughts on that? I mean, these are all good ideas. Uh, we got one in the chat here. Okay, Genesis twenty eight thirty four, and it came to pass about three months after that that I was told Judah saying Tamar thy daughter in law hath played the harlot, and also behold it is with child by whoredom. And Judah said, Bring her forth and let her be burnt. Um, in Exodus 2, verse 2, and the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And 2 Samuel 6, 11, and the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, three months. And the Lord blessed Odom, Edom, and all his household. So, so these are interesting verses. So we have three different periods of three months that are mentioned. So one has to do with Tamar. Uh, the other one has to do with um, Moses. And the other one has to do with uh, the ark after it was um, sent away by the Philistines. Can, can we bring these together in some way? Okay, so the comment in the chat is that are they all relating to hiding something? Okay. That's 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 a good thought. How would we put that on a line? I don't know. What's the idea you have? Do you have an idea? Well, okay, you've got these hidden situations, right? They occurred at specific times within the history of the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. Is it something that in a chronological line would have an import for today? Mm. So if, if I'm looking at this right now. Yeah. Okay. We're talking, we start here with Genesis 38, 24. Three months after with Judah and Tamar. Then we're talking Exodus 22 or 2, 2. And we're talking about Moses. 
And we know the approximate year when Moses was born. Well, yeah, yeah, we do. And then 2 Samuel 6, 11. Yeah. So how do we place these as being something that are of I mean this this from 2 Samuel 6:11 we're talking about the ark having been of course away from Shiloh but before it comes to Jerusalem isn't it or am I thinking wrong yeah, the, the ark, um, yeah, it leaves Shiloh. Stephen knows that history quite well. Yeah, I think that's when Uzza had uh, touched the ark. And so they, they gave it to, um, they put it in, into Obed-Edom's house for three months. Is there a is there a, a meaning to the name Obed Edom that we have yet to address? Um, well, there is a meaning. Um, uh, so. I have um, serving Edom. So Obed must be like servant. Yeah, Obed. And then Edom, I think, means like red or the right. earth. So a laborer of the earth. Hmm. But is that in, in a way that we would look at this, since Edom was the, the brother of Israel, is that serving the Protestants. You also had Jacob when he was returning to uh, to meet with Esau after twenty years. Right. He said, "To I am your servant, um, your servant Jacob." I think he said it uh, implied that. So, right. He did. Yeah, so in a sense, he was saying, I am Obed Edom. But is this typifying um, the history from 1919 through 1957? I mean, we certainly understand that that the ark with the commandments was being set aside by some. We understand that the the situation here would be a a type where the ark and the law were not in their right place. Okay, so Stephen has, so there's a couple of comments we got here. So we have one, just dealing with Miller, he was a farmer. So, I mean, could we look at the three months as representing the first, second, and third angel's message in Millerite history, and that it represents the repeat of that message in our history? And, and Stephen, so what's the reference there, Genesis 32.4? What are you seen in that 
Well, as, as Stephen was just saying, thy servant Obed Edom. Okay. Edom being Esau? Right. Okay. He's comparing him, he, that Israel is comparing himself as okay. a servant to his brother. Okay. So, so, so Jacob then becomes Obed Edom. Right. Okay. That makes sense. And, and so how does that, does this, can this relate to Miller and Millerite history? I haven't considered it in that manner yet. Yeah. Now, in Genesis 32, verse 4, what's the context there? Is that's after um, that's after they were in two camps, divided into two camps, right? It's also yeah. after his struggle with the angel. Yeah, yeah. I think right. just before it, just before it. Just before it. So uh, so Genesis 32, Jacob fears Esau. Um, okay. Okay, you're right. So, but yeah, the, the point that I have here is that the place where this occurs is Mahanaim, the place of two armies. All right. Right. So this occurs at, at Mahanaim. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, onto the land of Seir, the country of Edom. And he commanded them, saying, Thus shall ye speak unto my lord Esau, thy servant Jacob, saith thus. I've sojourned in Laban and stayed there until now. So, yeah, and then we're going to see that then he's going to wrestle with the angel. But it, the point is that this happens. Now, maybe to me, Mahanahim means a lot more than to other people. I don't know. Because nobody ever seems to really pick up on this. Um, so what's the significance of Mahanaim? I mean, it's the place of two armies or two camps. What is it illustrating? Two classes of worshipers. Two classes, yeah. Two classes. Okay, two classes. So, so I would disagree with that. But does it also represent the second angel's message? Good. Okay. So, so I wrote a scripture song some years ago. Uh, 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 when something like Shuvi, Shuvi, Hashulamit, Shuvi, Shuvi, Vanach Zebak, Mate Hezu, Mashulamit, King Cholat, Hamacha, Nayim. So it was written in Hebrew. So I, I just Read it, wrote it uh, and recorded it one day. Now that is in the Song of Songs, chapter th uh, six, verse 13. Return, return, O Shulamite, return, return, that we may look upon thee. And what shall we see in the Shulamite? As it were, the company of two armies. So is this the second angel's message? So Mecha Nehim. That's the, the company of two animals. I don't know if that's a do doubling or not. <laughs> it's definitely a doubling. Shuvi, Shuvi. Yeah, okay. Right. And then Shuvi, Shuvi again. So it's a doubling of a doubling. So would this represent the, the, the second angel's message? It's repeat. Would this represent our history? Seems to be. Seems to be. So, so the way that I read this is I look at Obed-Edom, the three months, and we could look at the other three months, but just the one dealing with Obed-Edom, that he's blessed by these three angels' messages. And it's it's the sanctuary, or the ark, really, that, that's in his presence that blesses him. And, and it must represent Millerite history. Or, or am I am I wrong in saying it must? No, I don't think you're wrong on that. Okay, but it also must represent our history, the repeat of history. 
because we have Obed-Edom, the servant of Edom, Jacob, Israel, prior to his wrestling with the angel at Mechaneum, right? The, the two armies, the company of two armies. Right. And, and he's sending this message before, before to Esau, saying that he'll be his servant, that he's the servant. And, and so it has to represent Millerite history, but it also has to represent our history. One is we're repeating Millerite history, which we know. Now, so what's hidden then, if we're dealing with this idea of something that's hidden, what is hidden? We have Moses hidden, right? Correct. Oh, and 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 uh, Iran meant, remembers that Tamar had twins. Right? Correct. So that's a doubling there with that three months. So with Moses, when um, he's hidden three months, what, what would that reference, what is that giving us? Well, again, with the, with the three months, we, we could have 88, 89, or 90 days. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I wondered, well, okay, so there's a number of things about that. So uh, three months, 88, 89, or 90. Yeah, mostly you're going to have 89 days, but 88 is possible. I mean, I shouldn't say mostly, but, you know, you could have either. But also it's Exodus 2.2. 2. Is that a doubling? Yes. Okay, so we can see the symbols of the doubling here. And therefore, since we're seeing the symbols of the double, the symbols of the second angel's message. Right, so we're seeing the symbols of the second angel's message. Which but we know that this movement is a repeat especially of the second angel's message, because you can't have a third without a first and second. But we're also aware that the church itself has set aside the third angel's message and they have rejected it. Right, but, but the Levites still are going to accept it. So the organizational structure has rejected it, but we, we still believe that the message is to Levites. Right. right. Now, we also have a name change for Jacob from for Jacob to Israel, a covenant. So we know that, that we're experiencing a covenant, that, that God is asking us to enter into covenant. And we haven't fully understood what that means as Seventh-day Adventists. It's not something that we, we talk about. Other than you know, baptism or something like that. But what God wants to accomplish in his people is little understood. It went from, it went from a leader like Jeff to an individual, like individually. Okay, can you explain what you mean? Um, not sure. <laughs> well, well, you're saying that the movement fractured with the death of Jeff? No. Well, yeah, I mean, but we, as, it's as not an individual. Indiv oh. That's not. Well, it's not individual work. I mean, turn into an individual work. Okay. Yeah. So we had a movement, but now it's down to the individual. And we, we dealt with the, the idea that Jeff is dead, not that he's actually literally died, but as a right. symbol that uh, Omega said that, that he had died, that Joshua had died. Right? In that sense. So... Um, so definitely, we, we've we've gone down to this work of an individual, but the movement still exists. I mean, we're not going to be doing this work just as individuals. Um, 
there has to be harmony amongst God's people in giving this message. <clears throat> now, um, another thing about 90 days is, uh, I mean, we could count it, we could apply it as months, because we've already done this sort of, we've taken 2,300 months, and instead of 2,300 days, well, we could take 90 days and call them 90 months. Now, this date that I have um, in 2030 is this date of April 5th. So, you know, I could count back from, from April, April 5th, and I could take, you know, 90 times, times 30, and then count how many days that's going to be, would be 2,700 days. And that would bring me back to uh, November 13th, 2022. I could have also taken them as literal number of days, um, or a liter so that I would take not literal number of days, but 90, 90 days representing 90 months, but use them as the actual lunar months. So if I took 90 times uh, 29.53, for instance, I'd get uh, 2,657 days. And if I counted back from that date, It's going to bring me to, uh, I think I did that right, December 26, 2022, unless I did that wrong. I might have typed the number in wrong because I got a different one before. Yeah, so that's correct. So if I go back to December 26, 2022, that's still a date in the future. Is that date significant in any of our lines? So, so we're just we're just playing around with things here. This is how I do things. So, so let's go to um, let's go to some of our lines. Now, now we could even probably move back to, to December 25th just because it's partial days. But if, if we look here at this chart, what we're looking at is um, the chart of Collins. So this is this period of time from Biden's election all the way up to the midterm elections and 65 days following. Right? So, so this is what we had... Uh, looked at in one of our Friday night studies dealing with the presidents of the United States. Now, we have um, this date here, the 24th day of the 12th month, is 46 days after November 8th election. Can people see that? You should be able to see it now if you couldn't before. Yeah, even I can see that. Yeah, okay. And so what we have here at the at the beginning is also 65 days. And we did 19 and 46. But it's 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 a an ordinal count, so it could be 46 or 45. And then we have November uh 22nd um 2020 as this part of this structure. So we're going to have Biden is elected and then we have the Siege of Washington, D.C., which marks that period of 65 days. So Colin did that part of it. Um, and then we have this structure over here, which Colin didn't do as literal days, even though he had done the math on it. He just used the symbols of the 46th president and the 19th Republican president. So he would just say that Trump would retain the symbol of being the 19th Republican president because he would believe that it was invalid um, and, and of course, he would still technically be the 19th Republican president anyway. But um, 
I mean, you could say he's the 20th because he's reelected again. So it just depends how you look at it. But this is how Colin looked at it, not as days, but as symbols. But if I take that 90 days and I count it as lunar months, it, it between, uh, if I go from the 25th of December to the 4th of April, 2030, that would be the span of time. Um, in, in between that span of time would be that number of months. So, so it could bring me here is what I'm trying to say. So maybe that maybe that's how we would apply it as just a symbol of time. That 90 days is 90 months instead of three months. And we would just take it as literal time and it ties us to a symbol we already have. So that's one possibility. But we could just look at it as a symbol of a repeat of history. That when we look at the period of time, the three months, that they take to divorce from their strange wives, that this divorcement is a symbol of the three angels' messages that occurred in Millerite history and are to be repeated in our history. And that this movement has this symbol applied to it because the movement has to separate from its strange wives. We have this call to repentance on December 25th, 2021, and we first have a period, a 10 days test, however we want to apply that, if it's a span of time of some sort. We still don't know what that means as, as far as other than the symbol of 10 days, but that we are given 90 days to make that separation. And that could refer to all the way up to April 5th, or really April 4th, the last day of that year at sunset, to when the message, maybe the third angel's message being proclaimed or something like that. I'm not saying that that's what we're, we could, we're doing. I'm saying we could look at this as a symbol, just even without having that date be a real date. Is, is that making sense to people or am I moving too quickly? I think I'm offering this logically. Okay. Now, um, so one of the things that, that, that I looked at originally, which I just want to go back to. So we had all of these dates, these 2,300 months, all of these symbols from the first day of the first month uh, to the first day of the first month, right? So that one year period that's symbolized in the story of Ezra 7 to 10. And we can see that it, it illustrates our history. Yeah, the fourth day of the fourth month, April 4th, is a doubling of 44. But um, I'm just saying it's it's ending that period. It's just in between things. But anyway, uh, what we have here is, is, is another structure. Now, this was another way that we arrived at 2030, in that Steve and I, back in 2016, had come to see this structural chiasm here. And, and this structural chiasm comes from the story of Joseph. Um, you have the 30 years that Joseph is before he's baptized. There's the seven years of plenty. And then the seven years of famine is divided into two and five years. And we could see that this applies here with the week of Christ. He's 30 when he's baptized. There's a week in there. You have to imagine you see it. And then you're going to have five, uh, uh, two times um, 252. So this has this mistake in it still. 504 years, which is 2 times 252, and then 1260 years, which is 5 times 252. And that's 1764 years. It says here it's 2, but it's actually 7 and 7. Okay, so we have 7 times 252. And Stephen had me count backwards, and it came to the date that the year that Jacob dies, the year in which he blesses his 12 sons. And so this is an extremely significant structural chiasm. 252 years after that is the end of the 14 years after they cross the Jordan. There's 756 years, three times 252, 
to 723 BC, whoops. And then there's another 756 years to 34 AD. Now, the thing that was interesting was Abraham leaving Haran, which is where we sort of started. That's, that's Genesis chapter 12. And it's 232 years to when Jacob blesses his 12 sons. So when God first makes that covenant with Abraham in Genesis 12, it's going to be 232 years until we have the 12 tribes of Israel blessed. And so I noticed from 1798, it's 232 years to 2030. Now, this whole period is a period of a 3,992 years or 3,993 if you count them inclusively. So here in this one, I've, I have it with inclusive. And um, I've done all these different uh, divisions. That is, this is 4,114 lunar years. So I'm just going to zoom in. A lunar year is simply a year of 12 months. That's all it is, 12 lunar months, like the Islamic calendar. And so this period is 49,368 months, which is 264, a symbol that we get from the 26th day of the fourth month in um, Josiah Lich's prophecy of Revelation 9, and the symbol of 187. If you multiply that together, that's how many months you have, and that's how many lunar years it is, 4114. It's a mirror. Now, in this diagram here, I'm just, I'm just going from 1963, and I'm just counting from the first day of the first month to the first day of the first month. So I'm not, I'm not giving a date here in 1963 BC that we can mark. Now, I've re represented this another way. So this one I did put um, the first day of the first month. And I've divided this here. So what you see here is uh, 11 times 187 and 11 times 187. So that's simply what I've done is I've taken this, um, this period of time and I divided it into 22 equal sections. And I went from the first day of the first month in 1963 BC to the first day of the first month in 2030. And so you can see here, I've actually have 41,104.5. So I'm being more specific how many days it is exactly. And I'm then dividing this into these periods of time 187 uh, is representing 187 years lunar years and and each lunar year is 193 hours um, and 5.54 i don't know what the r means there it's probably supposed to be it, it might be a typo minutes anyway that's probably too much detail for people. Now, I did it here where I actually started on the first day of the seventh month in 1963 BC. And, and again, we have the same thing, but it's just much more precise. So 187 lunar years is 2,244 months. Um, so that's how many months it is. 186 biblical years is 2,300 months. 186 biblical years is, that just means using the biblical calendar, is 187 years and 20 months prophetic. So, so we have all of these symbols. And on the bottom here is the, the week of Christ giving us 2030. Now, this is the first day of the first month in 27 AD was March 28th on the Julian. But in 2030, that's going to be April 5th on our calendar. So, so from this, what, what do we see? So what is it, can we, can we argue that this covenant 
the symbol that we found of the covenant, that it's tied up in all of this history. It ties us right back to the Abraham leaving Haran. And that the first day of the first month in 2030, as a symbol, I'm not saying it literally is some date, some event on that date, but as a symbol, is saying something to this movement at the present time. And that it's been trying to speak that to us since 2018, because that's where I first found it. I know it's a lot of things, and we're going to go over this chronology in a more meticulous manner uh, as we move through this history, is through this study. There's just a lot here to consider with the lines that you're putting forth. Yeah, and, and again, we're going to look at them, but but just the one point that we want to look at is, can we see that this is about the covenant? Yes. Right, and if it's about the covenant, this is what this movement has been studying for months now, is that we need to enter into a covenant with God in order to accomplish what God has been asking us to accomplish. We can't do it in this sort of fits and starts. We can't do it when the movement is divided. We can't do it when there's this, I mean, and right now, I mean, we have a divided movement and anybody who tries to argue that we don't isn't really looking at things. I mean, we're not, we're not meeting together. Some, some of us are, but, you know, we have a group of people that won't look at anything I'm presenting. Okay, so yeah. I'm going to ask I'm going to ask a question. Okay, is chronology part of the Word of God? Well, yes. I mean, that's why we've been studying it. It's, is it's, uh, the is the numerical representation of one eight seven part of the Word of God? Yes. I mean, it's it's fundamental to Adventism. Then, if these are part of the word of God, would we not be foolish to set aside the word of God? Yes. So in this, in this situation, can we observe that the covenant is made up of numerical symbols and has its basis in chronology. And without these, we will not come to understand the covenant or its relation to us today. Right. So when we go back, you know, to the story of Joseph, I mean, the story of Joseph is fundamental to Christianity. It's fundamental to our understanding of God's word. Right. And we know that Jacob... He's going to enter into Egypt. He's the 22nd generation, right? There's 11 generations to the flood, 11 set generations to them entering into the land of Egypt. And, and he's going to bless after he arrives in Egypt. Um, 17 years later, he's going to bless his 12 sons. Well, he also blesses, you know, Joseph's two sons, but. But, you know, he blesses his 12 sons. We have the promise made to Abraham being fulfilled. And we know from when Jacob begins working for Laban to when he dies, it's going to be a period of 70 years, which is a symbol. We also know that we have here on this chart. I mean, there's lots on this chart here. But you're going to see, you know, Abraham, when he leaves um here, you're going to see this uh, 215 years plus the 17 years. That's going to give you the 232 years from when he leaves Haran. Also put from when he leaves Ur. But, um, and you're going to have these symbols, the 777, 7777 here. You're going to have the 17 and 11. 17 times 11 is 187. And you're going to have this double 17 times 11 and 11 times 17. 
and there's the two 11s are the two 22 years, just like the 22 generations. And so when we, when we look at this, we can see that this is all about the covenant. It's all about God speaking to this movement with these symbols, right? They're not, they're not something that we, we just made up to try to prove something. There's something that unfolded gradually to this movement over a period of time and has been witnessed to all through the prophets. And, and I would think that to reject this as just somehow the work of man's imagination would be extremely foolish. And yet people have done so. Rejecting uh, Palmoni, rejecting yeah. Christ. Yeah. We can't just look at, you know, the people really have nothing to do with it. Whoever found this, it's, it's not really the issue. The issue is, is it in the word of God? We always have to ask the question, not who is advocating such a view. But the question we always ask, have to ask is, is it true? So whether people have personal feelings about me, should have nothing to do with what they consider about these things that are being presented. We can never let our personal feelings, our hurt feelings, get in the way of accepting light from God. And so the 11 and the 11 of the 22 years of Joseph are see seen here represented as 11 and 11. 11 times 11 times 17 is, is 187. And, or 11 times 17 is 187. And so you have this period of time here, which is 11 times 11 times 180 times 17, to get that span of time, which goes from 34 AD to 2030. So that's going to be half of um, 4,114 4, years. So, so this can't be created by me. It can't be created by any mind other than God's mind because it's it's in his word. So, I mean, that's where we're at. 2030 has, has caught our attention because of this chronology. But now what we're doing is we're trying to sort through what that means to us. Just another thought. Okay. Jehoi Jehoi has, so he reigns three months. Yeah. Okay. And then you have Jehoiakim between between him and Jehoiachin, who reigns three months ten days. Yeah. Now, if you add up the the days they reigned of Jehoiahaz and Jehoiachin, you have 187. Yeah. And then you have in between them, you have Jehoiakim, Kim, who reigns 11 years. Yeah. So you have like uh, a 187 and 11 in the, yeah. in the kings. <laughs> yeah. And Zedekiah reigns 11 years too. So you got 11 years for uh, Zedekiah and for Jehoiakim. Kim. And then the 187 days by putting the, the three months and the three months and 10 days together. So, I mean, it's it's pretty profound. We can see that this ties in with things that this message has been teaching for a long time. And so July 18th was not some accident. It was something that God was trying to show us about the covenant that he wanted to enter into with us. And, and this, of course, you know, we, we notice these things and it's very involved. We can't remember it all. Right. Our, our brains can't do that. Yeah. So 187 times the square root of two is 264 with a decimal at the end. And, and we've looked at this relationship bet between the 264 and the 187 in various ways. So, so we know these symbols are real. There, there's something that was designed, right? We, we can all see that. It's not, there's just no way that you could argue against it other than to just dismiss it. 
so so when we're going to be looking at 2030 so we're going to on friday um friday nights and then twice uh on the weekend after so this this weekend coming up it'll be just friday night and, and i'm going to try to get a bit more material prepared because i've just been working on another paper so I, I probably shouldn't have done that but i i have to get that out of the way otherwise i have too many papers that i'm working on that are unfinished uh, i only allow myself four unfinished papers at a time so um so then I got to work on that 2030 paper. And there we're going to be looking at why, what I think 2030 has to do with this, with this movement right now. So it's not just about 2030 in the future. It's what it's saying, what this message about 2030 is saying to us at the present time regarding this covenant, regarding the work that is being set before us, the task that we have to complete. And we, we have to enter into covenant with God if we're going to complete this task. And, and it's not fun, right? When you have a difficult task put before you, it's not fun, correct? Especially something that pushes you to your, to your limits. And, and many people would shirk from that. I mean, our nature, our human nature, does not want to do what God is asking us to do, correct? It's what the nature yeah. is telling me. Yeah. None of this appeals to our nature. Now, there's things that, you know, we can play around, around with religion. We can, you know, pretend to be a part of a movement so that we can flatter ourselves that we're better than other people. But when it comes down to what God is actually asking us, we can't do it. It's going to have to be God that does it through us, in spite of us. I mean, God tends to have to drag us tooth and nail uh, to do what he's asking us to do. But he's given us so much evidence, and so we can't ignore it. And we can't look at ourselves, and we can't look at the obstacles that are before us and just say it's impossible. So any final thoughts before we close with prayer? I think you're presenting this very well. Well, thanks, but um, it, it's still going to take a lot for it to sink in, and and we're and we're going to go over it again. I'm going to keep reminding us of these evidences. Well, I appreciate everybody's contribution. It's been um, it's been a blessing to be a part of this study here today, and. Um, No, I guess he doesn't. So let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we are again thankful for the Sabbath. And um, for those who are interested in truth, who are seeking to understand your word and your will. And Lord, we know that as we look at... Um, what you have shown us here today, things that we have never seen before. We know, Lord, that they come from you. And we just ask, Lord, that we can heed the light that is shining upon our path. Give us the strength to walk in it. May your angels watch over each one. May you help us in our day-to-day -day struggles. And may you bring us together again to study your word is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.